Oh, sorry, didn't see you there. Hi, welcome to the Ubuntu Touch Q&A, the UbiPorts Foundation show discussing the development of Ubuntu Touch and our community's questions. This is episode 97, streamed live on March 27th, 2021. My name is Dalton, and joining me this week are Alfred. Hello. Marius. And Florian, <laughs> silently. Hello. Hello. <laughs> now they won't know which voice rap belongs to who. Oh. I'm Florian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to see if your device is supported by Ubuntu Touch, you can head over to devices.ubuntu-touch.io. If your device isn't on the list, it's going to need a custom image made for it. You can go to docs.ubports.com slash porting to find out how to do that. All right. Well, let's get right into it this week with some questions. These come from our forum over at forums.ubports.com. And we take questions from there first, then we move on to live chat. And later, we're going to talk a little bit of news. Heading up this week, Olive had a question for us. I follow the project only for a few weeks, but it seems that you spent a lot of time playing cat and mouse with upstream projects like Qt and Ubuntu. How do you estimate the time spent on this versus the time to actually improve Ubuntu Touch, and how do you pick up the next tasks and sort them as high or low priority? Oh my god. Uh, this, <laughs> this is... Um... This, this hit the nail um, because this is exactly what we are currently struggling with doing is is upgrading to to focal and we just did that with with cute with upgrading cute um, but the great news is that especially for uh, the one to one once we have upgraded to focal um, we will be there for a good while uh, focal isn't going out until 2025 20, or something like that right um, so we have plenty, plenty of time to to not worry about that. Um, but one thing that will help us a lot, uh, and I mean a lot, is that we are getting stuff into Debian. Uh, once stuff is into Debian, um, that would mean that we basically can just apt install it from the next version of Ubuntu and not needing to to port everything like we do now and package it and play catch and mouse. So that is going to be amazing. Um, and I that is what's going to gonna save us and might also make it able to to do interim releases of Ubuntu, uh, not as a stable one, but as something people can try on their desktop, uh, which is the, the long-term plan to, to be able to, to deliver a desktop um, experience too. And I hope that we can get stuff into Debian really, really quick. Uh, we are about 30% there, um, and the last ones are, I would say there is some, some huge ones, uh, which will take time, but there's also a bunch of smaller ones, with, 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 which will take uh, a little time. And also, while we are on the topic of, of upgrading, uh, where we talk about Qt updates, updating to, to Qt 12 was probably one of the, the harder tasks. Uh, the next version of Qt will be a lot easier for us to do. Uh, kinda ish, we have already done it on Manjaro. Um, it actually works there with all the the, the ARM. Uh, no, with all the the Q12 fixes, and it pretty much is is there. Um, but a lot of test is failing, um, and then. Then uh, Qt 6 comes along, um, and that will be a task that we won't dream about right now because I don't want nightmares. That's going to be a nightmare. Well, and Qt 6 doesn't have a lot of its modules released yet anyway, so there's not yeah, much we, for us to do Yeah, we can't there. do it. We can't do it right now. There's not much for us to do there. Even Plasma is not working there, so. But we'll get there. So but we get there. Yeah. It's a little bit of a game of cat and mouse, but I think that's just software. And especially yeah. open source. That is software. And I think we are doing really, really good. We are not playing the the cat and mouse game like that much. Uh, of course, right now we have been, been playing it. Um, but it's been but a good if, couple of years. 
Yeah, it's been a yeah. couple of years, and and then we did the last Qt update to Qt 5.9, uh, but that was easier than doing this one since a lot of stuff had changed between nine and twelve. Um, yeah. But between between uh, twelve because and some 15... of the stuff was done fast and not necessarily right. <clears throat> what? Oh. Yeah, Canonical did that mistake. Uh, uh, <laughs> 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 All right. Alfred, can you take the next one? Sure. Uh, Gizmo Chicken asks, according to the project management and issue tracking page for the PinePhone, uh, applications running on the PinePhone use the Wayland protocol, not Mirel, uh, to speak to Mir. Therefore, all the issues posted on the Waylandify project on Ubiport's GitHub affect Ubuntu Touch on the PinePhone. I noticed that the reference Waylandify project hasn't been updated since July 8, uh, 2020. The question is, do you do the issues posted on the Waylandify project still affect Ubuntu Touch on the PinePhone? Yep, that's why they're still there. Uh, but it's 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 a two-sided thing here because the Waylandify technically wasn't for PinePhone; it was to get Wayland stuff into Senior, the main branch uh, for everything. Um, right. So so stuff that is in there doesn't necessarily mean that it's broken on 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 uh, on the PinePhone. It more or less means that the work hasn't been done to to get it into the main line or the main development branch. Um, In that case, I've been using your project wrong, Marius. <laughs> right, but it's it's also it, it's kind of a an umbrella for for everything though. So it doesn't it's not only that. So it is correct to use it for issues on Wayland, um, but it's also correct to use it to the the main goal of Waylandify is to get stuff into to the main senior branch, right. basically. But yeah, most of the things in there do affect the Pine Phone stuff, like trust store issues and yes. But also, that's all. they also they also affect the main branch. Huh? So okay. <laughs> oh, Alfred, you're gonna love this one. Mario.ch had a question. In Ubuntu Touch Q&A 95, it was written that the Xperia X was tested with Holium 9, and the aim of that was to see if NFC support and fingerprint reader would be best, it would work better with it. Unfortunately, it didn't work, so we're switching toward the main line, um, especially getting help from Marine and Conrad from AOSP. And not a lot works, that experiment, but there are very early days. Start needs to be made with stability and then performance. CPU and GPU scaling aren't implemented. The Sony community's mainline kernel is currently at 5.3 with the next target at 5.12. What's new with the mainline kernel, Alfred? Um, so with the mainline kernel, it's currently at uh, development. I have to be honest with you. I'm not uh, looking into development uh, right now fa firsthand. Um, but... Uh, it seems like there is first a bring up coming for 5.12. Um, maybe Conrad can help out on this. I see he's in the chat uh, right Did now. Did I say AOSP? Sorry. Yeah. You're, uh, Con Marine and Conrad are not from AOSP. They're from the Sony kernel community. Yeah. So mainline. Right. So SO mainline, mainline exactly. Um, so uh, I'm not sure how the development is right now, but I do know for a fact that I will, when it's coming out, I will first try the binder uh, security story that I've talked in the past uh, Q&A. Um, I will definitely uh, make sure to, to take a look at that uh, as soon as they're ready. I don't want to push them into releasing the, the sources if they say it's not clean yet. So I'm just waiting, and uh, for now, there's not a lot to talk about, it, to be honest. Oh, they're all here. <laughs> that is They're good. all in chat. Wow. Hi, Hi everyone. <laughs> I think we just got raided by So Mainline. <laughs> oh, also, Alfred, is there any, uh, any news on a hands-free car kit? <laughs> Well, currently, um, also not much to talk about. Um, I have looked into the issues that are related to, first of all, making an SCO uh, connection uh, between uh, the, the headset and uh, 
basically the software that is supposed to, to, to talk to it, it's failing to set up the SEO. And uh, I cannot tell you how long it's going to take. I'm pretty busy with a lot of other things currently. So that had to be put on the shelf for now. So um, yeah, but I will take a look at it uh, as soon as we're done with things that I might talk about later in the show. Mm, 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 plug. Mm, mm. Excellent. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> Florian, can you get Ari's questions? Sure. Um, Ari has two questions. Um, can only recently announce that Flutter will be the default choice for future Ubuntu apps. Yeah, we got a lot of questions about Flutter lately. Could this choice advantage UT? What obstacles should be addressed before having a working and integrated Flutter framework supporting UT? I um, unfortunately cannot answer this, but maybe somebody else can take it. Yeah, so Canonical did recently announce that they are working with the Flutter community and, you know, Google to make Flutter the default choice for all future Ubuntu applications. Um, it looks like a really cool technology. I am excited for what it means for cross-platform applications that aren't like, you know, um, Electron. <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, I'm excited so far. Now there are still issues with it running natively on Linux, there are still some weird, um, just weird things that don't quite work right. But it's an early technology. It's kind of in its early days. It's exciting. And Google and Canonical are working on Wayland backends for Flutter so that it just runs under Wayland, which means it should run under Ubuntu Touch properly packaged. At that point, maybe we can look into making it easier to package it, making it easier to make templates that run on Ubuntu Touch. But for now, um, it's a little too early to say things, anything about that. Oh, the questions document are, uh, is rapidly changing as I'm trying to read it. Um... Uh, there's a second question from Ori. What was your first programming language you programmed with? Currently, what is your favorite programming language, even among those not supported by your team? So we go this around, Robin. Uh, Marius, you can start. You are the right of me here on the screen. Okay, so my first language, believe it or not, was JavaScript. Um, so I, I started out <laughs> in the nice. early days. I started out in the early days with, with actually just yes, modifying websites in, in Chrome. Um, so, well, it was it either Chrome or Firefox. I don't remember what I used back then. Um, but then I moved on to to actually bat scripts on Windows, uh, if you can call that a programming language. And I made installers for my friends, and I broke a lot of pieces. That's great. <laughs> um, and then I moved on to to Visual Basic. Um, I'm sorry. Which which I quickly found out was crap. So I actually moved on to Python after so that. So VBScript or VB.net? This is important. It's VB.net. Okay, so a little better. <laughs> yeah. A little better. A little better. But I, I didn't do that for... I probably did it like a month or something before I found out about Python. Um, and Python was probably the programming language I, I used the most back then. Um, and I made everything in Python. Um, but then after my, my history, uh, today my favorite language is definitely C++. Um, C++ and combine that with QML, and that is life. Which flavor of C++? Do you like the cute kind, or the boost kind, or the steadlib kind, if you're crazy? Stead, steadlib kind. Okay, C++ 20 isn't that bad. Yeah, C plus plus twenty is absolutely amazing. Um, C plus plus has come a long way to, from what it was, and I think people are not realizing that. I just <laughs> <laughs> when you said that, I started hearing notifications going. Or when I said something about C plus plus, I heard notifications going off. I was like, uh oh, who did I anger this time? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't turn off notifications. I have headphones, buddy. Uh... I guess I'll go next. Um, I started developing in a programming language that can't be considered a programming language, but it can. 
because it's 001 Game Creator, and it's was great, and it's flowchart based programming, and it really like it, it learned me how to make programs good. Um, there, I did some terrible things there. I moved on. I took a class on VB.net, and that was when I decided I didn't want to be a developer. Several years later, um, I was actually uh, in school to do uh, networking and systems administration. And someone said, you know, you'd be a, I think you'd be better if you switched to development. <laughs> Not that I was bad at what I was doing, but that they thought that I could do the other thing better. Um, and it, that worked out for me, I suppose, <laughs> in the end. So... Today, my my more favorite language is I don't have one because I hate all of them equally. <laughs> <laughs> I know I mean, you like Python. I, I do like Python, but a lot of what I do is just maintenance work within Ubuntu Touch, so I'm touching a lot of different languages, and I've basically just decided that I don't like any of them at this point. <laughs> Python is fine because I don't need to touch Python and Ubuntu touch most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> Alfred, do you want to go next? Sure. Um, so I started off with uh, Visual Basic 6, actually. Uh, tried to play around with that. I quickly lost interest in it, but then I got in the, into school where we had programming classes. And I got, uh, you know... C++, uh, no, not C++, C Sharp and Java uh, classes and did those and it was fine then. I, I started writing some Android apps with, with the knowledge that I gained there. And then I went over to C++, which is my favorite now. Hmm. What, what style do you like? <laughs> you, mean, you mean in terms of, of uh, so like, age? Or which, like which version? Do you like standard li lib? Which oh, well, version of standard lib? <laughs> I do since I'm more uh, since I started off with uh, things like Java in school. Uh, I pr pretty much like the Java object inheritance style of Qt, so I'm I'm familiar with that, mm. so to say. So Someone that's says what I Java mostly. finally in chat. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, actually, I want to add that I also did a lot of Java, but that was because of of I I did a lot of Minecraft plugin things and it might <laughs> not. Plug uh, but Minecraft mods, and I, I made my own Minecraft uh, bucket plugins for this Minecraft server. So I did a lot of Java, but I absolutely hated it. Oh, and you wrote that? You wrote uh, Octodroid? Yes, I made Octodroid. Yeah, I had actually used Octodroid for a couple of years before I met you. And one day I was just looking at the store listing, and I looked over at Telegram where I was talking to you, and I was like, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's why it was crap. <laughs> <laughs> Florian. Oh, no. Well, got, where guys? to start? So <clears throat> officially, I started uh, my first programming language was basic uh, just because of the fact that this was the thing available on the on the uh, Commodore 64. Um, it was even a little bit um, before that that I got hands on the working uh, mainframe or, or a host thingy in my mother's company and I could play a few games but also could write a few lines of BASIC there. So BASIC was everywhere basically. Basically BASIC, yeah. Um, and that evolved then over uh, a ton of other things, uh, mainly in school it was Pascal. Um, and then some glimpses of the of the uh, visual basic things from Microsoft, but the embedded ones. So it was VBA, but not called VBA at this time, I think. Uh, over uh, Visual Basic 5, Visual Basic 6, uh, Java, a um, little bit of machine language in between, um, microcontroller stuff, um, C, a lot of C, um, Tege and Java on the university, uh, Modulo 2 on the university. I cannot, I cannot think about it. I even went on university to, to something, of course, um, um, Prolog, Ada. Ada is really nice, but it's totally useless. In, in, it's a theoretical thing that's really nice. And so on and so on. And uh, we're making, we're making a big... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, really. 
Um, moving forward to last uh, 15 years, because I got a, a professional software developer with working with .NET, I'm basically in C Sharp all over the place. Yeah? I can do stuff in C++, I can do uh, stuff, it's okay -ish. I don't like it that much. If you're gonna uh, leave behind all the things with pointers, then, well, why bother? Yeah, thanks, Florian is so, such an old guy, yeah, that's true, but I also started very early. <laughs> I mean, come on, I start, the thing with the Commodore 64 started for me when I was uh, 10 or 11 years with friends and with 12 I had my own. Yeah? So with 12 years old, getting hands on a, on a computer was a real thing back then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's it basically. I, I think I forgot a few, but um, the, the favorite, favorite one is just, yeah, I'm, I'm working C Sharp all the day. And I must say, I'm, I think it's really underrated. Um, just because of a few things that might set up people. But um, what I like most about it is that you can make less mistakes because you will get a lot of, uh, of warnings and errors out of that thing already at compile time. And you get a lot more information for debugging out of it when something goes wrong. Yeah, that's, that's really CLR what annoys nice me so that. much. Hmm? The CLR is pretty nice about that. Yes, because I get basically... Customers call me and say that doesn't work. Send me a log file with a stack trace, and in ninety percent of cases, I can pinpoint the error already to the right method, and then That's it's not so much nice. thing. Yeah, That's awesome. if you just get sec fault, and that's it. Well, you can search for days sometimes. Yeah. Well, speaking about compiler warnings, this is why I I quite enjoy working with with, with Clang or C Lang. Um, just because of the, the better debug messages that you get out of it. Mm. And, yeah, so. that's for sure. And treat People warnings as arrows. Treat warning as arrows. That's the cool thing. Yes. Yeah? Switch it our, on. Our coding style has, in, like, the, the coding in, in Ubuntu Touch has improved drastically because we enforce the error and, and everything um, on it. And it fixes a lot of issues, and people should do that. And I, I see people talking about C. Um, and I, Java. I do it. Yeah. And Java. There's a lot of it. there's a lot of people. The thing <laughs> with, with with C is that what you can do in what you can do in C you can do in C plus plus, but you have a lot more tools to you to your like you you have all the tools that you can use if you want. Pardon um, me for laughing, but you're starting the war. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah. I like C, but when I get shows of C or C++, I, I have to go with C++. It's just I have more tools that I can use, and I don't need to write a million things to do the same thing. Daniel asks, so Dalton hates to work with Ubuntu Touch? No, no, I don't. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here anymore. <laughs> um, I just, just complain take... about most things about equally. <laughs> But let's not rush into C versus C++ discussion. I think it's also not fair because um, it's not a, a fair comparison between these two no, things. No, they aren't yeah? the same thing. Why um, don't we move on? And it's just, yeah, it's too political also, yeah. I, Everything I is see, cool. <laughs> I see Martin, he is a C developer. He says that I only get Sigfolds and Sigma. Sigma, yeah, perfect, yeah. <laughs> No, no, Vala, Vala, no, no, Vala. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can agree here on one thing, all four of us, Guys. we can agree we don't yeah. like Vala, yeah? Yeah, right. we don't like Vala. Okay, end of that point. Thanks, Ori, for the great question. It was a pleasure. Martin also says that C++ is more foot, foot Stop it. Yes. <laughs> YouTube questions. Next one. Someone can asks. you confirm the yeah. rumors? I hereby create that of Ubuntu Touch coming to the Pixel 4a 5G. I have no idea about this rumor. I didn't hear it. Can we? Can we? Can we? Well, I haven't heard I don't this know. either. I don't. I cannot I really have... confirm it. If you're poor, I have heard it, but I can't. I can't confirm it. <laughs> <laughs> if you're out there and you're porting to the Pixel 4a 5G, get in touch with us. Because yes. that phone's pretty cool. Definitely. Uh, for kind of a question, one. Marius. For kind of question. I can't find it. Uh, when is Marius giving time to Manjaro Arm Lomiri Edition? So, so this is this is something I want to do, uh, but I don't have time. <laughs> Fix it. With. So this will probably come after focal stuff. Um, yeah, you find it. Thank you. Um, 
this will probably come after focal, but I probably will will do some in my my quote unquote free time when I get some free time. <laughs> I'm coming, Falcon. I'm coming for you. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm not sure of the next one. I don't think we can do it justice in this show. You know, uh, I think it'd be better as like a forum question. You know, if we are, if we don't answer your your questions live, it might just be because it'd be kind of hard for us to do it justice. Uh, you can join us at our forum on forums.ubports.com and ask the community, and you might get a better answer there or an answer at all. <clears throat> uh, Florian, you want to talk Anbox? Oh yeah, sure. Um, um, don't we have uh, sponsors in between? No, just do it. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Anbox Community Project, we're very pleased um, to announce that uh, the community is specifically Rudy and uh, what was the name of the second guy? I forgot. Steve. Steve. They started a community fundraiser um, to get um, real money to be thrown at a developer or two um, to come come um, to, to bring forward the Anbox uh, project and um, bring it out of its alpha state, maybe. Um, you can go to gofundme.com and find Anbox minus on minus on UT. That's the project. If you want to like to fund this, um, we would be grateful, of course, as well um, as those two guys that are trying to get all the money together. And then uh, in the second in the second uh, thing, of course, find the right people to work on it. But they're already looking, I heard. So uh, yeah, why not think about a small donation there? Um, because as we always said, currently core core team is totally booked, and we wouldn't uh, have time for that uh, in the next months. So if this is a speed up for Nbox, why not? Um, yeah, let's see what comes out of that. All right. Yep. Um, let's see. I don't like how that flows too much, so we're going to start the news first. All right. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Otherwise, I don't like that flow. All right. Let's talk some news this week. Um, so I didn't realize this while we were working on it because, you know, uh, we've been talking about how um, the releases after OTA 16 would be a little slower. You know, we're working on Focal. Uh, we've merged 33 PRs in the past two weeks, and that doesn't include like the hundred do um translations that got merged for and we really should talk about just getting web late to push instead of making prs um but but it has no conflicts anymore i finally found the button <laughs> what we're mainly working on is reducing the delta between um all of the different images for zenial which is the main zenial image which is shipped on android 5 and 7 devices the Xenial image, which is shipped on Android 9 devices, and the Xenial image that's shipped on the mainline devices. Because right now they have three slightly different code bases, and we're trying to reduce the changes between them all. Um, that means some cool things have happened, including fixes for thumbnails and media playback on the Pixel 3a. Thank you, Alfred. It was just some, uh, just some uh, uh, app armor stuff, turns out. Thank you. Um, Rodney fixed the document viewer app, so if you're having trouble opening ODT documents for doc viewer, update the app. It's in the store now, all released. Um, yeah, Yami fixed charging mode on the Volophone. That's finally been merged in. The Volophone has working charging mode. I think other Android 9 devices that boot the same way like it should have it working or almost working now. Which was a particularly um, common complaint that we were getting from people getting the Vala phone. That charging mode wasn't working. The phone always booted. So that is a very excellent fix. A lot of changes to our CI infrastructure so that we can actually build Focal, which is good. Um, Nikita says, not yet for charging mode on the Vala phone, but it is closer. I'm sorry. A lot of other Android 9 and 10 things have happened, um, including, uh, well, accidentally fixing the camera. <laughs> well, not, so that, 
That happened on all devices that weren't Android 9 and 10, but it came from the Android 9 and 10 fixes. Yes. So, uh, yeah, apparently there was a rumor that the camera flash on the OnePlus One was fixed. And yeah, that was true. Uh, <laughs> we didn't expect it to get fixed, but it did. So so this was a fix that, that fixed the parameters for, for Android 9. And um, f- for for unknown, well, for known reasons, uh, now at least it it actually fixed it on all devices, not only Android Nine. So that's that's pretty amazing. Yeah, and I so love Flash and Zoom are working on the Xperia X, the One Plus One, and several other devices where it wasn't working before. Um, so uh, thanks a lot, Nikita, for that fix. Um, none of us knew it fixed this, but thank you. Yes. This is the beautiful thing when when something works on Android nine or any other and it fixes everything else. It's... It really is a magical moment. Yeah, we can say it's a Mac moment. <laughs> Alfred, you want to talk a little bit about what you've been doing with the uh, near field communications? Of course. Uh, so, uh, as you may or may not know, I'm working on uh, NFC enablement for Ubuntu Touch. Uh, we do that by importing NFCD from Sailfish OS. And uh, over the last two weeks, it was upgraded to a newer version. So, uh, Irfan and I uh, were working on that uh, specifically. So, thanks again for to Irfan for uh, making some uh, enablement adjustments and uh, making it helping making it work. Uh, we imported it into the UbiPorts organization. So uh, we have packaging now, and uh, those build the packages for the system to be included in the long run. Uh, so the, the NFC um, settings panel has been merged too, as well as the writable path uh, integration. So that uh, when you toggle the switch, you can actually save the state uh, across reboots um, and uh, have NFC turned off if you don't like it for example, and uh, the inclusion in the actual system is pending, uh, but that might come soonish, maybe. I'll, let's see about that. Uh, and what also happened with NFCD is I spent the last week implementing the writing capabilities um, to NFCD uh, or the near the um, implementation, basically. So that means that the Qt APIs can be reused uh, to write to tags now. Uh, it's uh, not merged yet. It's still, I'm still doing the, the finishing moves on that one. Uh, just spit and polish, and then I will propose it for merge. For merge. Um, and this is uh, specifically for OTA 17. Um, so. Uh, the goal is to, to ship it with OTA 17. And um, the, docu- the document is changing a lot right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm having trouble keeping Just up keep with going. this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the writing capabilities, uh, a big shout out to uh, Matteo Salta, who provided the testing application uh, for the Qt uh, integration part. And with that, I, I actually have it running here on my Pixel 3a. So. I'm not sure if you can see it. Um, this well. is just not well. Um, now it's now you can't see anything. It's basically just uh, a little application that allows you to store tags, and when you want to retrieve retrieve them, you put it there. Maybe it changed. Maybe not. Yeah. There's a notification. Something it blinked did. up on screen. Yeah. All right. Now it's now it's working. And we now support uh, both uh, text records and URI and dev records, but also uh, smart posters. So those three types of NFC tags can be written uh, specifically on NFC forum two tags uh, because those expose the writing capabilities. So if you want to get NFC tags that are compatible, make sure that they're NFC forum number two, uh, or type two, basically. Hmm. And uh, it only supports single record writes for now, which gives us feature parity with Android already because they only can write one record. And uh, there is Mario is trying to do the this, same thing. This is UNFCD. Oh yeah, um, right. And it okay, it read it. Yeah, hmm. it it reads that one is by Danfro by Daniel Frost and. Uh, 
he was playing around with it uh, a little bit a long time ago, and I'm happy to see those things coming uh, to, you know, basically start working now uh, with the default APIs that we want to provide. So uh, thanks again to everyone involved. It's quite fun, and I hope to, to see interesting things uh, being used with it or being made with it, basically. Um, there's also ongoing work uh, with peer-to-peer -peer communication. Um, so the missing piece is I've done it locally already. It's just missing a test app for that. Uh, but the only the only requirement is uh, making the app armor confinement rules uh, more relaxed uh, so that you can actually talk uh, between NFCD and the application to register a service, to read a service and make communication work that way. Um, hmm. But yeah, it's it's coming, it's, it's, it's going very, very nicely right now. And I'm hopeful that we, we will ship it for OTA 17. Looks good right now. That's the goal, yeah. It's packaged for Focal too, which is awesome. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. More on that later. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. I am, this is exciting. This is new, this is different. This is, uh, I like this. <laughs> Thank you, Alfred. I like how we are not so predictable about what we are doing in the future. So when everybody thinks NFC will never happen on Ubuntu Touch, suddenly it's there. Huh? Suddenly <laughs> yeah. Alfred's like, I want NFC now. Yeah, and let's do it. <laughs> he wants me to. <laughs> to be clear here, uh, Alfred is volunteering. So he Alfred does what Alfred wants. Yes, that's a good thing yes. for him. Awesome. Donate to Alfred, everyone. Actually, yes. <sighs> oh, geez, that's not going to so. flow well into sponsors either. Are you okay with that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, thank you to everyone who makes Ubuntu Touch possible. And you can find a ton of those, including Smooze, Vala, and Private Internet Access, our platinum level sponsors, over at ubports.com slash sponsors they make it possible for us to do things like have a silly show every two weeks where we talk about ubuntu touch and um make ubuntu touch they help us have infrastructure to provide it to our users um it's just a lot of help from them and so that we can hire full-time developers to work on this stuff it's not cheap but it is nice to have all the help I'd also like to thank our community sponsors, including Travis Mackmer, Amalith, Rascognares, Incensefell, Dan Trevino, Daniel Franczak, Robin Hood, Laszlo Tomas, Ian Locke, Max Fielder, A. Thiel, Casey Lambie, George Toma, Renan Mirkalev, Mil Will Atwood, and Scott Marley. Whew, easy for me to say. Boy, if you want to put in a completely unpronounceable name in your Patreon form, I would be fine with that because I find this fun. Um, and if you, I, I apologize if you do put in like pronunciation guides or anything because I don't see the patrons <laughs> or like the Patreon like join messages to know if you've done that. So I apologize if you have and I'm still saying your name wrong. Um, if you'd like to join them though and have me mispronounce your name too, I swear it is an exciting experience, um, you can head over to patreon.com slash ubports. Or if you want to help us out another way, maybe some PayPal, LibrePay, or direct IBAN transactions, tax deductible in some jurisdictions, you can find us at ubports.com slash donate. Isn't this how the best work gets done, says someone? Um... Boy, I sure hope. Um, I sure hope they were talking about mispronouncing names. Oh, I'm up next. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, the past couple weeks, I have been throwing about 50 hours, not over one week, but over two this time. So it's 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 better than last time. Um, to work on the Pine Phone. This is bringing us closer to a new stable release. 
The Pine Phone kernel upgrade channel is where this work is happening, and you can upgrade to kernel upgrade just from update settings. After we're finished with kernel upgrade, it'll redirect you back into Devil, so you won't have to worry about it. Um, there is a problem that all distributions have with the Pine Phone where the modem hiccups, like all the time. And it says, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Bye. Uh, and then it comes back. Um, so, God, Bouchon's going to hate me for this. Uh, I made a small change to restart a phono whenever that occurs. This doesn't fix the problem. But it makes it a little better and makes it more likely that you will be able to receive calls and text messages when the USB resets happen. Because there is no predicting the USB resets and there are very few ways to recover after they occur. This is only one of them, and I'm hoping that we find a better way soon. I believe that Bouchon said this morning that he has been working for two days trying to find what causes them even. And of course, there are a lot of distributions working on the Pine Phone. All of them have the same problem and work around it different ways. So, like, all of us have spent two days on this at some point. <laughs> <laughs> trying to fix it. <laughs> the, there have been a lot of hours into this one problem on this one phone, that's for sure. Um, auto brightness has been fixed, and by doing that, I also fixed auto brightness on Android 9 devices, which was unexpected and awesome. Uh, I got the camera working on kernel upgrade again. It was broken for a while. It still only works at 2.1 megapixels, but that's what it was before, too. So, uh, the volume down button isn't stuck every time the device wakes up anymore. That was an issue in Crust. We got it fixed up. Thank you to Smail, Smail, Samuel, Samuel, um, for fixing that. And a huge thanks to Andre, you know, the creator of the kernel that most Pine Phone distributions are using. There's a lot of patches in there. Um, to make the Pine Phone work correctly. Stuff like the USB-C bridge driver. And I also, of course, need to thank everyone who works on this stuff. There's no way I can name them all. There are a few in our chat. There's Dan. There's Martine. There's just... There's Furcon. You know, I can't name all of them. But all of us are kind of working together on this thing, which is really fun to see. Um, and we all... We're all slamming all this effort together and taking exactly what we need out of it. It's just really nice. Ayuri says, after listening to this last sentence, I really like when and is part of a sentence. I suppose that was a really long sentence. Thank you for notifying me. I will try to do better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and so some of the time on the Pine phone went to annoying people into deciding whether we would use a new magnetometer or not. Um, I apologize if I annoyed any of you, but we did finally decide on the magnetometer thing, so I'm happy. Marius, would you like to talk a little bit about what's been going on in Focal? Yes, I can do that. So a lot of stuff have changed in, in Focal for, for the last two weeks. Um, now we have AppArmor fixes in, um, AppArmor Easy Proof Ubuntu, AppArmor Click, Click itself, Libuser metrics were all packaged by by Vardney, so that's already in in Focal now. Um, and many of them also have have gotten a, a tag release, so they are getting into to Debian. Um, next up, we have NCI Core, uh, LibNCI plugin, NFCD. Um, were all initially packaged by by Alfred on Signal, um, and then I took them over to um, to to Focal. Um, Auto package in the same vein is the libg utils, libg binder, libg binder radio, and libg real io. Wow, uh, that's a lot of libgs. That's, that's a lot of. <laughs> that's the that's the stack for for phono. Um, I'm currently pending on phono, um, and that those were packaged and uh, included by me. Um, next up, uh, Lumiri UI toolkit. Uh, has been moved to to GitLab. Um, 
the, the original name was Ubuntu UI Toolkit, but has been removed since then. All this work was, was done by, by me and Rajanan, mostly Rajanan now in the end. I did initial renaming. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, all the Qt mirror dependencies are built. So now Qt mirror is actually in focal. Um, so you can run that. Uh, speaking about running that, Rachanan has created a, a Debos recipe for building focal images. Uh, keep, mean, uh, keep in mind that these are minimal images, so they will do absolutely nothing um, other, other than, than spawning a, a SSH session you can log into. Um, this doesn't mean that you can download anything. It, 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 it literally means that we can build them um, for anyone that, that wants to, to develop or for or package it or something like that. Um, for us, this is a big deal. Uh, for most users, uh, this doesn't really um, mean anything because it's so so early on. But for us, this is this is a huge deal. Um, libg, I like your jib, libg. <laughs> um, hmm. Say someone in the comment. Uh, while I am on the, the packaging train, uh, okay. I will just, just go on to the next one, which is Debian packaging work, um, which like lib device info is now in the new queue in in Debian. Um, what does lib device info do, Marius? Lib device info is this amazing library made by by an amazing person, um, <laughs> and lib device info it detects um, what device is running on, um, and where you can also specify what different devices do and what the de uh, what different settings each device has. Mm -hmm. An example for this is, for example, the scaling. Um, so okay. it, it will de detect that this runs on, on, on FX Tech Pro, for example, and it will apply the correct scaling and uh, the correct settings for, for that device. Um, cool. And on top of that, it will also detect the difference between a Holium device and a Linux device or a Linux mainline device. So it automatically switch between the different driver it needs to be, which ultimately goes to our goal of running one root file system to rule them all. Wow. Wow. And that is now packaged and in the new queue in Debian. So hopefully that gets approved pretty quick and we get, mm -hmm. uh... wow. This, uh... So with all this focal work happening, a lot of what's being done is um, paying back our sins of the past four years um, and making the devices or all of these packages that we didn't import quite right actually packageable on other distributions. There's also yes. work on bringing things up on system D and making it so that new uh, libraries can be used by them. Uh, so this is all really helping with modernization. It's helping when we create packages that go into Focal, we're also creating packages that are easier to get into Debian. We're releasing them properly, which makes Sunweaver, who's doing the Debian packaging work, very happy with us. A lot of people is happy. It makes this. a lot of people very happy with us. Um, we're doing proper releases and proper branching, and a branches doesn't look like a mess anymore. Um, well, we've... Well, the stuff that are still left on GitLab, the GitHub, yes, but the, the new stuff that we package on on GitHub, or GitLab, oh god, my my brain, um, it's looking really nice. We now have a main branch where we can pull the latest stuff, and um, and this is it's like we're the, learning how to be an upstream. Yes, it's amazing. And it I think Forkan, Forkan too will be happy with this. But one thing I want to mention, which is quite amazing. Um, is that a lot of this work piggybacks out of, out of the, the, um, the Manjaro work that we did, because a lot of this has been been fixed for, for, for system D and, and upstream fixes, everything except tests, because I didn't do tests. Um, so ah, that's why they keep complaining about those in the, in the weekly syncs. Yes, yes. I didn't ah. fix any tests, um, but everything else, is fixed. So a lot of work piggybacks out of that. So um, I have to, it's a, also a huge thank to the Manjaro team uh, for helping me out with, with actually doing that work. 
uh, which which means we get two stones in one bird. Uh, wait, uh, <laughs> close. that didn't work. Yeah, it was close. close. Um, You're real close. close. <laughs> so we actually get Manjaro packages, and we can actually continue working uh, working on Manjaro, and we get Focal and Debian, and also soon some other distributions like uh, Fedora. I hear That's I'm... you like bugging the Fedora maintainer, isn't it? That's what you're no. trying to do. No, it's mostly the Fedora. <laughs> Got two stoned birds. <laughs> yeah, with the <laughs> with a metaphor like that, you would you, that might be. Bonnie says, "Wow, um, in two weeks it will have been exactly four years since Canonical dropped the project." I know it's weird, isn't it? Uh -huh. It is. Well, actually, it's it's the other way. Around. It's the Fedora maintainer is kind of bugging me for for not going too fast enough. So. <laughs> oh wait, that's no, not two weeks. How does this? How does date work? It's like oh, whatever, ten days or something. Florian, do you want to talk a little bit about porting or push? Sure, because okay. nobody else is talking about porting. I will take it for. <laughs> oh well, Alfred did a little bit. Um, so I'm again looking into OnePlus five five T. Um, basically, a lot of things are working there, but uh, there were very strange things with the recovery ongoing that we couldn't uh, get our system image to install. Turned out today it just took me two hours, what I was trying to do for weeks now. Um, you just have to look at the right spot and um, see that uh, now we can start testing with the installer and with the installer config. So OnePlus 5 uh, soonish TM going into into beta testing with the installer config already. It's already on the system image server. It's basically not ready for daily use, but uh, it's a lot easier to try out for people maybe if we uh, can supply them with an installer config to try to install it properly. Yes. Um, yeah. The next thing is also kind of porting thing. Uh, some devices have weird uh, things with the with the indication of. Uh, Charging state, um, a charging history graph, um, not turning on or off, or don't showing charging state correctly. Um, I found some some things there while no final resolution. That um, actually a few components plus the U power the upstream, they just don't speak about the same things and the same language all the time. So while it was working for the older devices, Android five, Android seven, Android nine devices. Are supplying a lot more batteries uh, that are not real batteries to those uh, subsystems and they just get confused. So basically you're not looking at the real battery, you're looking at a fake battery graph that is always 0%. The software is working but it's just looking on the wrong information. We have to fix that in some way. Will be interesting because also if we are thinking about that all of this stuff should work on desktops in one day, like if you're bringing upstreaming stuff, we should not upstream an indicator or system settings that only work on Android phones. Yeah? Right. So that will be a challenge. Um, the last thing that I had was last Saturday, I decided to try to help Ari with Bluetooth backporting because he has one device that really refuses to work with the backported stuff uh, properly. And uh, we decided to make a live stream uh, on YouTube uh, also kind of experimental for me to see how that goes. For two hours I was just showing my terminal and trying to backport his kernel uh, with Bluetooth patches. Went very well. If you want to look for the recording, maybe you can put this in the show notes. Um, it's on my private thing, it's not an, on the official reports channel, but yeah. That was nice. Uh, a few people watching, maybe two at, at a time, max, but still. And uh, live hacking sessions transmitted on YouTube could be sometimes uh, really interesting for, for others as well, maybe. And of course, the recording is also nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. That's cool. I, uh, You've bothered me a little bit about that battery stuff. I apologize. I already said what I was working on, so I don't have any more excuses than that. But No, it's fine. I forgot to mention, the Pine Phone wakes up. Like all the Yay. time when you plug in power now. Very good. <laughs> Which wasn't actually a fix in the indicator, but I, I thought it might have been. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Repower the indicator and the system settings. They're all playing with different goals here. I don't know. It seems like it sometimes. I, 
I feel like the the comment from from Daniel, if we answer that, is gonna make a flame war. But yes, no. totally, Morph is best. <laughs> 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 okay. And we are uh, a little bit over time, but doesn't matter. I think we can continue a bit. We started um, a little late. But yes, okay. true. Do we want to keep going? Do we wanna... Hello, pizza loving nerd. Hi, Lucas. Lucas Hello, is here, too. Hi there. Hello, Martin, too. Martin, I, uh, I, I am. Hi to him. Yeah, but... Oh, hello, dark one. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hello, everyone. Where did all these people <laughs> hello, come everyone. from? <laughs> yeah. I know those people. Pizza Lover Nerd says hello from Pine sixty four VC. What Voice does VC chat. mean? Voice, Voice chat. Discord. Ah. It's what the kids that... are on. Kids. <laughs> Marius, do you want to talk a little bit about Marius Land? Yes. Um, I don't know what this so... means, but you know. Marius Land is just what I have been doing for the last two weeks, basically. Oh. Um. So, I have been doing focal mostly. Uh, well, not fo well packaging mostly, I would say. Uh, Debian, Focal, and moving to GitLab and pack packaging things on GitLab. Um, um, and I've also been doing reviewing and mirroring P PRs. But the most interesting part is that I have been going out on a quest to try to make performance better. Um, it's already good, already really good, but I want to make it even better. Um, okay. So I've been tracing around in the opening system, trying to find issues. Um, and at this point, I still haven't found any issues. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but I did find something that, that actually we can do a lot better is, is QML improvements. Um, and this is something I, I want to do uh, over, the, la over the, the coming months and, and on and off. And I'm trying to improve the both the memory usage and the CPU um, utilization okay. um, because our QML currently is a bit it's binding a bit too much than I would like to it to bind. So I, I want to remove a lot of those bindings and um, so um, yeah, that's uh, that's what I've been doing. That I yeah. And we also talked a lot about it, you know, further up in the show. So, yeah, it's been it's been a busy couple of weeks, and I think that the length of the show is probably going to suggest that. Um, yeah, I've just been really happy with how things have been going. Thank you all. I'm glad we get to talk about it. Um, by the way, anyone in the community, if you have things that you want to submit for us to talk about please let us know because while I am watching the community and seeing what's happening, sometimes I miss important things. Um, so ping me on anywhere. Uh, the forum or telegram is probably best, but there um, I'll be able to see what you're talking about. I'll put it in the show notes and we'll talk about it here. But I think that's about going to do it for this q a thank you everyone for joining us and wow we have a lot of we have a lot of people here taps or spaces uh -huh. says martine i pick outro <laughs> <laughs> i use what's default if you want to see if your device is supported by ubuntu touch if you liked what we were talking about here you want to know if a device is right for you or not head over to devices.ubuntu-touch.io there we have a listing of the devices which are supported by ubuntu touch along with information about whether they can be installed with the UV ports installer, what works and what doesn't. All the useful things that you want to know. If your device isn't on that list, it's going to need a custom image made for it. And you can go to the porting documentation at docs.ubports.com slash porting to learn more about that process. While you're there, you'll slam on the keyboard as much as possible. <laughs> and you'll do things you might want to find us on other social media like Facebook, Twitter, at Mastodon, LinkedIn, or Instagram, or if you want our news directly in your chat client, you can find us on Telegram or Matrix. News channels, links to all those down in the video description. You can chat with us on Matrix or Telegram, or you can find us for longer forum content on our forum over at forums.ubports.com. You know, if you're interested in talking about uh, things you want to do in Ubuntu Touch, things you want us to improve or change, good places to go. We love hearing feedback from all of you. 
And we love getting your questions, so please do submit them for our show. We post the link around Tuesday of the week before the Q&A. Uh, and you can get your questions in there. Answer them live. It's fun. Everyone's talking about how old they are in terms of Windows. Which is interesting. <laughs> uh, I think I'm the oldest in Windows years. I, uh, I'm always mm. the oldest. That's so boring. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm old and I'm Windows 10. Hmm. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And we will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Friday. Smack the like button and subscribe.